Truckers of Reddit, have you ever gotten spooked or creeped out while parking overnight somewhere? If so what happened? I used to haul salt water off of well sites in Oklahoma on the night shift. I was standing at the rear of my trailer as I was loading out in BFE somewhere when I heard gravel crunching like someone was walking towards me. Got that feeling where you feel you're being watched. Stepped around the trailer towards the sound and shined my flashlight at a cow licking the side of my trailer. My name is Cow, and when it's late, and all the men, have parked the freight, and when I find, a man who's stuck, I walk right up, I lick the truck. Pulled over for a break on the way to Melbourne from Sydney at a truck stop. No street lights or anything, pitch black. No other trucks or cars at the stop. I turn off my lights. I switch the truck off. Do the curtains. Lock the truck from both sides. Jump into bed. Set my alarm and set my phone above me in the compartment. I was rolling over from side to side for around 5-10 minutes. I couldn't get to sleep due to it being prime summer temperatures, reaching around 30 degrees at night. I'm looking up at the ceiling mentally planning out the day ahead. Suddenly the passenger side door opens up slightly. Cabin light turns on. What the frick? Now, the truck is fairly a late model and in pristine condition so there's no question about door being faulty or anything. I just sat there for what felt like eternity expecting someone to come up and see me sitting there with a solid rod in my hand that we use for tightening belts. No one came up, nor was there any noise at all. Just quiet, eerie silence. I grabbed my torch, and jumped down, walked around the truck. No other trucks were around, nor were there any cars. It was just me and my fully loaded B-double. After around 5-10 minutes of getting fricked around with, I locked up and went to bed again. Woke up next morning, yawned, fixed myself up along with the bed, opened the curtains, and fml there's a cemetery next to the stop where I parked. Hunger and laziness all escaped upon realization. Grabbed keys, frick putting shoes on, frick putting pants on, switched truck on and the just got the frick out of there ASAP. Back when my dad was a truck driver he stopped to sleep in a lot one night. The guy he leased his truck from happened to see him parked there and in the morning when my dad went to the restroom this guy used a spare key and hide in the sleeper. Once my dad was on starting to leave the guy reached out and grabbed him. My dad said he freaked out so he just bailed out of the truck. It was moving around 5 miles per hour. My boyfriend is a truck driver who routinely does midnight runs. Oddly enough I asked him this question myself a few days ago. He told me that one night he getting ready to park in a lot next to a truck stop. He said it looked like there was no lights, no cars, no sign of anyone but he said screw it he was tired. He woke up the next morning parked on the side of the road with three highway patrol vehicles behind him. He was about 15 miles away from the truck stop he parked at. Thing is, he was sleeping in his camper the whole night. He has no idea how he got on the side of the road and logic says someone tried stealing the truck and succeeded. And the police convinced him of this happening as they saw a man in a black jumpsuit running away from his truck into a nearby field. Even then, he still feels uneasy about the whole situation. Apparently the doors were still locked from the inside and there was no real sign of anyone trying to break in. I think waking up not where I went to bed would break me. Two stories, maybe not winners but creepy overnight parking for sure. I was really new to the business and had parked at a stop in Texas en route from one place to another. It was August. There was nothing unusual about this situation. I was in the middle of a parking lot with 70 odd other trucks. I woke up with a start 6 hours later to the truck shaking and rolling, hellacious noise all around, and a psychedelic light show blasting me from every direction. It was a severe thunderstorm that I'd had no idea was coming. Wind, pounding rain, thunder, and lightning to beat heck. Being in a truck during a storm is closer to being in a tent than in a house. I'd never experienced it before, and even though I grew up with this kind of severe weather, I lay there in this tossing heaving sensory party going, I don't even know where I go right now to get safe if I had to, heck, I don't even know how to find out if this is severe or regular or a tornado, I was really tired the next morning, 2, I parked for the night somewhere in southwest Michigan, on the way to Grand Rapids, again, a truck stop full of trucks, shut down and went to bed, I woke up looking at one of the cabin lights, which was on, I think, 
Fell asleep with the lights on again genius end freeze. The light I'm looking at only comes on if you deliberately turn it on, which I never did, or if the door is open. Just then I felt the slight roll of the cab that's telltale whenever someone is climbing up. I wish I had some heroic Rambo crap I could claim I did, but I can't. I yelled. Now, I can make myself heard in very loud environments pretty easily, and this was the dead of a quiet night. And I yelled, get out loud enough to send Legion into the Gerasene pigs. There was a frenzied scrambling and the truck rocked some more. Then I hear a very small woman's voice. I'm sorry, I got the wrong truck nothing from me for a second. Then, are you okay? Yeah, just get the frick out of here. Moral of that story, lock your doors. She was either a driver or a prostitute, and it doesn't matter because, either way, she got the wrong truck. A couple years ago I was sleeping in my van in North Hollywood after getting off of work. I had the seats folded down and a long plywood plank with a mattress on top of them, so I was elevated at windows level, but they were tinted. Woke up late one night and was startled by a guy standing outside staring into the van and talking to himself. I realized he wasn't trying to look in, but was looking at his reflection. I don't know how long he had been there but he was there for another 15 minutes until he staggered off. People really need to realize that there is a good chance somebody is looking at your dumb butt when you check your reflection in tinted one way windows. We have a big window like this at the office and several times a day people walk up to it and check themselves out, primp, make kissy faces etc. And meanwhile there is an office of like 15 people right there looking at them. Have a trucker story from the extended family. An uncle used to drive a lot and he always came back with the most weirdest stories ever. While every family member knew his stories there was one story he told and warned about. Even to me when I was 6 or so. Moral of the story is to never stay during night in the desert alone. It seems. Once he drove to Chile. He had a contract and the way there was a K. I made the travel myself later in life it's beautiful. Whenever he was done he usually spent a few bucks on booze. But this time due to a family gathering he wanted to come back as soon as possible. So instead of drinking in some bar. He decided to sleep a bit at the Atacama desert. Well, it's a desert, and he had parked way outside the road in a few miles before the next village. He sleeps and wakes up on someone singing. He is confused and thinks it's the radio but the radio is not on. Then the singing stops and it sounds more like a scream of help. That's when he wants to get out and help, but still he is confused. He said, he started the motor and the lights, to see where and who was there. He also did open the window a bit and yelled asking what happened. It was nothing. And right then when he decides to get out anyway, he catches a movement in the corner of where the lights end. It looked like a woman but the face was pitch dark. He freaks out and drives away, non-stop until he reached home. Whatever he saw or thought he saw. Every time he told the story his face went pale. Even my grandmother commented how he was usually a very jolly guy but whatever happened in the Atacama desert freaked him totally out. That place is all kinds of spooky. From extraterrestrial to supernatural. I like. The Atacama is where they found that alleged alien ancestor mummy. Like most people here this didn't happen to me. One of my good friends from middle school had a stepfather who was a truck driver for a good amount of time. He was a tough son of a bee. I never saw him not look like he could kill someone, except one time, when he told us why he stopped driving trucks. He was on a long trip from somewhere down in Texas to Boise, Idaho. By the time he hit the freeway close to Boise he had already been up for 24 hours. Either way I don't believe he could have seen this coming. Outside of Boise he was driving, late at night at the fastest legal speed when out of nowhere he sees someone sit straight up in the middle of the road. He didn't have enough time to even hit the brakes, not that it would have helped. She was decapitated on the spot. He later found out she was tweaked out. I don't think even if he wasn't sleep deprived he would have seen her lying in the road. From what the police could gather, she walked out there, sat down and eventually fell asleep in the road. No one knows who she was, or how she got that far out. Holy crap. One of my trucker friends has a story about spending the night alone in a rural stop in the middle of a main winter. She had a bit of an uneasy feeling about the place but couldn't put her finger on anything and needed badly to rest. So she stayed. Perfect Stephen King setup, right? She's usually a very solid sleeper, but wakes up around 3am that night. She's not quite sure what woke her up, 
until she notices that the cab is very slowly and gently rocking side to side. She can also hear an intermittent, soft sort of rubbing sound that corresponds with the rocking. She was a seasoned trucker already at this point, but really wasn't sure what this was, and all the ideas that came to mind ranged from the mundane but alarmingly unsavory to the outright paranormal. Terrified, she creeps up to look in the side view mirror to see what's out there, turns out some moose like to lick the road salt off of semi trucks. I moved to Maine earlier this year and realized that Stephen King was not joking about how creepy and weird this place is. I love it so much. Not a trucker but I drive a lot of miles in a company truck for my oil field company. I am on call 247. So I am out at all hours. One night after a long day on a location in the Oklahoma panhandle, which is rather remote and sparsely populated, I was driving back to the town where my shop is located. I got too sleepy to drive and decided to pull over and nap until the sun came up. So, I pulled off of the two lane highway down a county road and parked on the side of that road. It's safer than pulling off on the shoulder of the highway and no headlights to bother you. This was his common practice for me. I left my pickup running and turned the headlights off and leaned my seat back and fell asleep pretty quick with the ESC on low and the radio turned off. I slept pretty good for maybe an hour and then I guess I was having strange dreams so I woke up but just kept laying there because I was groggy. The wind was picking up and sort of shaking the truck with random strong gusts. Lots of wind in Oklahoma. Eventually, I started to imagine I was hearing whispering or murmurs but I attributed it to the wind and my sleepy state or maybe the radio being still on but low volume. I kept hearing it so I sat up and turned the headlights back on to look around. The lights illuminated the dirt road to my side and in front of me, about 50 feet in front of my truck and extending down the road into the dark where my headlights faded out were maybe 20 coyotes all milling around and sniffling around in the gravel of the road, their eyes reflecting in the lights. Coyotes usually run from light and avoid humans and their noise at all cost. There was no fear in these coyotes and I was sort of struck by how many there were all standing in the road. They all eventually moved off into the dark as a group. I wasn't really afraid as I was inside my truck but my feeling was an uneasy one. So, I got back on the highway and went home. Lol imagine if you got out and took a pee without turning the lights on first. I was driving the 93 highway in Nevada late at night one time. It was a lonely stretch of pavement so I wasn't worried about cops bothering me if I slept on the side of the road when I ran out of time. Though when I pulled over to get some rest a couple minutes later a car pulled up behind me. I was driving alone for most of the night so this guy must have been driving pretty fast. He had his high beams on and I was a little worried he might get out and ask for help or try soliciting physical intimacy from me or something bizarre. Anyhow, I kept my eyes on my mirrors in case he tried anything. But eventually I was pretty sleepy so I tied the seatbelts to the door so I'd get alerted if that guy tried breaking into my truck. As an extra security measure I went to bed with a tire thumper on hand. In the morning he was gone, and while I pre-tripped I checked extra carefully, but found nothing out of the ordinary. A little odd, but who knows, maybe he was ready for sleep too and thought being near an 18-wheeler was safer than being alone. Another time late at night, I pulled into this dimly lit, lonely truck stop somewhere in the south, I want to say Alabama. It was raining too. And right before I went to bed I was on my phone shit posting then heard a knock on my door. I always hate when someone knocks on my door. It surprises me every time. This time especially because it was late and no one was parked near me. I lowered my window and see this middle aged man. He's holding up a driver's license saying how he needs help because his rig broke down. Now this truck stop was right off the freeway so the only thing between it and the road was a ditch and a line of trees. That wasn't a long walk away, but I wasn't eager to step outside in that weather and also because it was dark. He asked specifically for cash, but I only carried around my card so I told him I couldn't help him. He said fine and went off to bother some other guy. If he was still around by the morning I'd help him out I decided but no one who had a broken truck was around and when I asked cashes they didn't see anyone come in asking for help. I think I might have avoided being mugged or getting murdered. But otherwise nothing too unusual. Honestly, the guy probably also needed rest. And pulling behind you with brights on illuminated your trailer like a mad mothifager to keep people from hitting him while also not blocking you in up front. Or something. 
not me but my great grandfather, a trucker during the 60s, had ever told her a creepy story of being on the road. To my surprise, she said there was one story he told her as a cautionary tale. It's not about parking overnight somewhere, but I thought it might fit in here just the same. He said he was driving through somewhere pretty rural a small town with a few houses here and there. As he was making his way down the road, he saw a large cardboard box tumble down a hill and come to a stop pretty much directly in his path on the road. It was too late for him to break, but why would he? It's just a cardboard box. It's not like it would hurt his truck if he ran over it, so he kept chugging forward. At nearly the last second, he said something came over him and he immediately swerved to the right to avoid hitting the box. When he looked in his rearview mirror, he saw two little kids scramble out of the box and back up the hill. It's amazing what little kids in a small town will do for fun. I still feel sick to my stomach after hearing my mom tell that story. Kids have done this in piles of leaves, too. These tiny kids in my town hid in a pile of leaves in their driveway planning on scaring their dad when he came out to check on them. Instead, he accidentally backed over them in his truck. My father-in-law is a trucker in Australia. He told me a story of one night, in the middle of outback, not a soul in sight and hundreds of KMs between towns. Australia is huge, especially on the west coast where we are. Pitch black night, a tire blows out. He pulls to the shoulder and starts the task of changing. Feeling uneasy, he keeps looking over his shoulders. Something isn't right. Working fast, telling himself to stop being a scared cat. Then, all of a sudden a hand lands on his shoulder. Hey there mate, you have a spare smoke. An aboriginal man has wandered up to him like it was a normal thing. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night. He says, no mate, I don't smoke. So the man just walks away into the darkness. He reckons he aged about 20 years that night. All the time. The worst might have been an incident that happened a while back in Indiana. I was just parked for a 34 hour reset. Means you can't drive for 34 hours so you can get a full 70 hours of driving back. It's the hours of service that allows us to drive and count our hours, just outside of Chicago. Now for all you non-truck drivers. Right out of Chicago in Indiana is probably the first place you learn about not stopping if you can. Drug dealers. Lot lizards. Prostitutes theft the whole nine i didn't have a choice i had nothing left at all for hours so i sat that night i heard someone messing with my truck in the back i sat in my truck while i heard this continue for two hours i would much rather deal with it in the morning than go out to see what's going on and getting robbed at weapon point woke up the following morning to see my fifth wheel handle pulled means if i drove i would have unintentionally dropped my trailer i had attached and my glad hands the lines that connect my truck to my trailer that provide me with braking capabilities. Completely missing. Worst of all they undid my freaking catwalk like savages and ran off with it. I was driving overnight in a very low populated area. Due to circumstances I was seriously sleep deprived. Driving in a poorly lit stretch of woods. My headlights started to cast shadows through the rails on the side of the road and started playing on the trees on either side. It looked and felt like I was driving across an ocean. And then the hallucination started. When you are seriously sleep deprived, you'll start to see shadows flicking across the edges of your field of vision. Shadowy figures started appearing in the water next to the road, swimming alongside me. They looked like monstrous mermaids, jumping in and out of the water. The Dutch roads are notorious for having very few truck stops that actually have space for a real truck. So I drove for another hour taunted by these figures. First truck stop I pull into and ready myself for a nap. I wake up a couple of hours later and one of the figures was in the cab with me, looking at me. I freeze, terrified for my life. I couldn't move until I calmed down enough to start noticing that while it seems to be moving and breathing, it doesn't seem to move that much. And then I realized it was my coat, slung across the seat. Panic subsided and I used the adrenaline rush to drive the two more hours I had to go. Other time, less spooky but creepy enough, a truck stop I was parked at was infested with lot lizards. I had already seen some of the less lizardy types get into trucks. I was reading a book when suddenly I hear my handle of the passenger door being pulled. It was locked, luckily, but that didn't stop the unseen puller to try and try to open it. It stops for a second and I suddenly feel the cab swinging a bit like someone was on the ladder. 
Up comes this horrible visage of rotting. Missing teeth with a balding head and so much eyeliner it could be called face liner. She mimes giving me a BJ, but I refuse. She jumps off and I see her storming off. Furious about something. Most of the other truckers were laughing at me. She was well known amongst the local truckers for her wiles. This is the scariest story here, not because of the hallucinations themselves, but because I just learned I may be sharing the road with people who are operating 40 ton vehicles at 60 plus mph while severely sleep deprived. Also not a trucker, but have a spooky story. About 3-4 years ago, my dad and I took a 25 hour journey from Southern California to McAllen, Texas, Mexis, as some call it. This was late November around 5 to 6 pm. Still plenty light outside. This white car that appeared to be fresh off the lot, no numbers on the plate, just the dealership plates, starts pulling in front of us repeatedly, and cutting us off amidst the freeway traffic. The windows were heavily tinted so you couldn't see who was inside. It was pretty irritating and they continued to do this, so we sped up and eventually lost them. It began growing dark outside. I was tired, and I fell asleep as my dad continued driving. At this point the freeway was empty, we had passed the major cities in Texas, there was nobody else on the road. I woke up at about 1.30am because I could feel our car alternately speeding the frick up, and slowing down. I sat up and rubbed eyes and noticed we were alone on the freeway. Wait, holy crap, was that the same white car behind us? I look at my dad who didn't say a word but continue driving very seriously. My dad's a very confident driver, macho man type guy. We were going up to 110 miles per hour. This white car would match our speed, then quickly switch lanes and pull right in front of us, over and over again. When we'd slow down, they'd slow down. When we sped up, so didn't they. This is some pretty scary crap when you're in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Obviously I'm panicking. I was 19. Like what's happening? Are we going to be okay? I don't know what they're trying to do. It's like a game of cat and mouse. My dad says. I guess this has been going on for at least 30 minutes. So my dad decides to end this once and for all. He starts gunning it wayyyyy fast. Close to 117-120 mph until they are out of sight. Which works. He takes the closest exit. Pulls off the road. We went under an underpass. He switches off the lights, kills the engine, takes a gun out of his center console, gets out of his car, and just stands there. My dad is a very calm, stoic man, ex-cop, who never shows emotion. I was convinced we were both going to die, or I was going to be brutally kidnapped by the cartel or something. About two minutes later, slowly, slowly, I hear gravel beneath wheels, my heart freezes, and I see the white car, eerily slow, exit the freeway, and turn the corner in the road, towards us. The lights shine directly on us, under the overpass, illuminating my dad, firmly positioned, both hands on his gun, pointed directly at them. They just passed us, continued their slow drive down the road, towards the gas station. We immediately turned the car around, went back to the freeway, booked the heck out of the gas pedal, and never saw them again. I just don't understand what could possibly motivate someone to pull that crap like the white car did, and then exiting the same and following to where you're stopped. I used to drive truck in northern Manitoba. There's a road in the northeast you can drive for several hours and see very few vehicles. This road is quite flat and straight and stretches. Of course, this is deep in the bush. One day I saw something cross the road in the distance. Very large, easily past the hood on my truck. But not long, like a moose or elk, just tall. It disappeared into the bush and as I drove by the spot the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I heard days later a tow truck driver describing on the radio his encounter with a similar creature, only he was much more clear he had spotted Bigfoot. This guy went to some length to explain he didn't want people thinking he was crazy, but he was sure what he saw. I asked an aboriginal client of mine in a nearby community and he said the elders spoke of them as commonly the same way they spoke of the other animals. I don't know what I saw that day but I'm certain it wasn't a bear, moose, deer or elk. I just don't know what the heck it was. My brother was a truck driver in the 90s early 2000s. He just told me this story a few months ago. He was driving through Pennsylvania one way back to NJ. 
he pulled over the side of the road behind two other trailers. In the early morning, he heard someone bang on his right door. He quickly jumps from the sleeping compartment and grabs his bat. As he looks out the window, there's no one there but now there's a bang on the left side. Freaked out he looks out that window and there's nothing but silence now. He's trying to figure out WTF is going on. Seconds later banging on both doors simultaneously. He said the banging was so loud and heavy the truck was shaking. Both curtains open. He can see there's no one out there. He quickly jumps in the driver's seat and starts the truck. He sees the other two trucks ahead of him do the same. He said he felt as if they all had experienced the same thing. Maximum overdrive. I was driving in a team truck and I would drive the night shift it was about 1am and I was listening to Art Bell on Sirius XM. Now I am the biggest skeptic on the planet, but I also love a good spooky story, so I always enjoyed listening to his show during the short time he was on there. I am rolling along on I-40, no traffic, everything going smooth and these guys on the radio are talking about taking digital recorders to cemeteries and recording voices of the dead. A lot of the voices were supposed to be children begging for help. It was seriously creeping me out. All of a sudden the biggest freaking skunk I have ever seen appears in my headlights. I screamed like a little girl. I hit it. Can't swerve the truck for animals. Because you can roll the rig too easily. My co-driver was woken up by the scream and came out of the sleeper to see what had happened. Then the smell hit. I had had the AC on just fan with outside air because it was cool out and that skunk odor filled the cab. We had to pull over to the shoulder and get out to get fresh air. That truck smelled like a skunk for weeks. NSW. Not a trucker but worked with lots. Worst story I heard was a guy who parked up in a layby for a few hours sleep. Was awoken by banging on the cab. So came up front and opened the curtains to see a guy stood in front. As soon as the guy saw him he got his dong out and started wanking in front of the cab. He didn't stop until the driver got out of the cab and literally chased him off. Thinking he might come back the driver moved his truck a few miles down the road and went back to sleep. Only to be woken up by the same guy doing the same thing a few hours later. Phoned the police the second time and the guy got in a car and drove off. Nothing too creepy but I've parked in a few less than desirable places. The first was next to PNG in Kansas City on the edge of the ghetto. Nothing happened but it was still freaky at the time because I was fairly new. Yes. I've had a couple bums lot lizards knock on my truck but if you stay quiet they just move on. I've heard random bumps in the night but never really worried about it. I heard a story about a police officer in Chicago or NY making a trucker move his truck so he didn't have to deal with a homicide in the morning. My granddad was a truck driver in Korea when he was in the army post World War II. Every night driving down a supply road a certain tree would bang on his roof. He got sick of it so stopped the truck to climb up and cut the hanging branches. He shone the torch up all on his own on a dark road, and it was legs. Traitors were hung there apparently. He only drove the route at night so didn't see. Okay that is scary. Am trucker, based in Canada, was crossing border through Detroit, got pulled in for inspection, flashing police lights, megaphone instructions, police escort, had a load of tubes. I pictured pipes of some kind. Turns out it was a load of old cathode ray picture tubes for recycling. They give off faint radiation and trip the sensors. Spent 4 hours in a cinder block room without my phone or passport. Finally released, almost out of hours of service. Pulled into the first truck stop I could find. They told me they charge 10 bucks to park there. This is almost unheard of. Most truck stops want you there because you're going to spend money. They explained it was because it was a gated yard with a security guard watching your butt overnight against the rampant crime in the area. Ah Detroit. Also rolled past Gary, Indiana which is infamous for murdering truck drivers. Glad to be Canada only now. Gary Indiana is such a horrible place they built a highway over it. Not my story, but my grandma's. My grandma was a truck driver who delivered all sorts of things across the US. She has all sorts of interesting stories but the most intriguing to me was the time her and her husband, truck drive together, stopped at a rest stop late night. My grandma had gotten out of their truck to use the restroom. On her way out leaving the restroom she decided to walk around the rest stop. She described the area as a sidewalk that went around in a full rectangle with shelters. 
playgrounds and other things in the middle. There was a man at the end of the sidewalk who my grandma had seen. At first he looked like any other truck driver until he jumped and hid behind a post of one of the shelters. Freaked out, my grandma decided not to walk any farther along the sidewalk. My grandma says the man kept sticking his head out every 20 or so seconds as to see if she was getting any closer to him. Frightened, she decided to cut through the middle grass area to get back to their truck. The man peeked out again and saw she was gone. My grandma says he then ran the opposite direction from her with what looked like a knife and jumped a fence. She hauled butt and left the truck stoop ASAP. I was loading hay in winter in northern Minnesota almost by Canada. This type of load is usually picked up in a field. There are no street lights or any lights for that matter. I finished getting the load on my trailer and the farmer said I could sleep here. Farmer took off as I was throwing my tarps on in the darkness. Now I'm alone, in the middle of the field with just a flashlight and my truck lights. I get down to throw my bungees and I hear howling. I have a husky back at home, so I know what that sounds like. Except this howling is getting closer to my truck. I hurry up and jump back in the truck to warm up. I just sit there and turn on my headlights to see if something was out there. Sure enough it's a wolf in front of my truck. I just leave my truck idle overnight as it's cold out. Jump in the bunk and say screw this I'll leave when I have hours too. Never got back out of the truck until daylight. One time in the middle of the workday I got this ungodly painful migraine. So I pull off at a truck stop with my load. Shut my curtains and take a nap. I was asleep for maybe an hour and a half but I woke up because I had the most vivid freaking dream of me waking up in my sleeper and continuing my day. In my dream I remember I was still loaded and coming down a hill when a four wheeler slammed on their brakes. I locked mine up and swerved left, which you should never do. I went into the bar ditch and rolled my rig. About that point in my dream I woke up drenched in sweat and was completely mind fricked. I was really hesitant to get back in the driver's seat and finish my day. Yeah, that's terrifying I'm sure. It's basically the lead up to final destination. Very early in my career, within the first 6 months, I spent the night in Detroit, parked outside of my delivery point waiting for my appointment time. This was a common enough thing that lot of lizards frequented the area. Guy in the truck next to mine tried to not pay and got shot by the pimp running the girls. I'm betting you paid up after that. My dad was a trucker for many years. One time he told me he'd stopped at a mandatory way station somewhere at night that was refurbished from an old train station. My dad parked the truck and got out, noticing that someone was walking along the train tracks with a light. It was really late, so my dad called out and asked if he was okay. The man kept walking. My dad said he had a lantern in his hand. My dad called out again and the man never turned around. He went into the office and told them that some drunk butthole is walking the train tracks and the guy behind the desk nonchalantly says, yeah was it this guy and points to an old butt picture on the wall. It was a picture of all the rail yard guys from like, over 70 years before. Sure enough, my dad had seen one of the guys in the photo. Apparently a lot of people have seen whatever that was and come in asking questions. Apart from that story, he has many where he has seen people die, seen bad accidents and driven past blocked off parts of the road where he can clearly see a white sheet over lots of blood. He told me a story once where he saw a motorcyclist merging onto the freeway get into an accident with a car, and the cyclist's head just popped right off, helmet and all, and went hurtling through the air. Not a trucker, but was making the drive to my new university from halfway across the country. It's dark and I'm driving through pitch black forested rural areas. But my destination is only another 2 hours away, so I'm going for it. I'm tired, but determined. Maybe a little too weary to still be on the road when it's so dark. Then, as I'm making my way up the slow curve of a hill, I see 4 bright blue lights glaring in the distance through the trees, hovering maybe 5 feet off the ground, but it's too dark to tell how far they are away from me. I'm freaking out. I don't know if I should slow down or speed the frick up. But either way I'm getting closer and closer. It only takes about 30 seconds for me to round the curve in the road. But it felt like forever my blood has run cold and my mind is racing because I watch way too many stupid UFO conspiracy documentaries. Finally I can tell where the lights are in relation to me. I'll be directly passing them soon and I swear I'd never been so on edge before. 
If my hands weren't so tightly gripped around the wheel they'd be shaking. Christmas lights. They were four plastic stars with blow lights in the center, having been hung up on a few trees. As I was breathing a sigh of relief and regaining my composure, I passed the farmhouse they most likely belonged to. Frick that. Christmas and yo face, motherfucker. This is actually one I can answer due to my father having been a truck driver for over 30 years. He is currently in the hospital due to back problems. There might be a connection. Mind you, this story might has happened 5, maybe 20 years ago, and it's a retelling of a retelling. I might even go back and edit certain parts if I recall something different, but I'll do my best to summarize. One night, as my father was trying to catch a few hours of sleep in the bed bed of his truck, before having to, kind of illegally, drive a few more hours, than he was supposed to, due to time constraints and bad traffic all day, he heard little bumps from the outside, like a raccoon trying to get into a metal shed, so his first thought was simply it probably was a raccoon, but then things turned a bit creepy, he started hearing more noises and finally some mumbling from outside, clearly, no raccoon, but a couple of guys, maybe 2-3, Fully convinced this wasn't just an animal, my father tried to get up, but simply couldn't. It was like he was mentally all there, but his muscles weren't responding. It wasn't anything like sleep paralysis though. Turns out, those guys put a little rubber tube through the truck's little skylight, which was tilted open slightly, for some fresh air while sleeping, and poured some kind of knockout gas, or something like that, into the truck's cabin. Barely conscious, he could just lay there and watch. As two men entered the cabin, after fiddling around with the lock for a few more minutes, they took all they could find. Both company and private phone, his wallet and even his shoes. Something that I personally find most terrifying. One of the thieves was searching everything very thoroughly. He gave my dad a complete pat down. Pockets of pants and shirt, under his pillow. Basically anywhere someone might hide something valuable. Personally, that would have freaked me out the most. And the most interesting part about this story is, that he told me about it, as if it were just a thing you gotta go through, when being a trucker, and this story in particular isn't too rare out there, he said. He also told me a ton of horror stories from other drivers, but I wanted to keep it in the family for this one, maybe another day. Or today, you could tell another today. I had to park in a bad neighborhood in Oakland once. It was the middle of the night and I was worn out, out of hours and couldn't find a truck stop or anywhere safe to park. The customer was in that neighborhood but closed obviously until morning. I saw broken glass on the street, bars on all the windows, etc. Just looked bad all around. I parked by the curb and expected to be kept awake all night, but surprisingly, it was the quietest night I've ever experienced. No people, no cars, no dogs barking. I didn't even hear any planes flying overhead. I thought that was kinda creepy. Was with my father who used to drive a truck for 25 years. On a rainy night like I hadn't seen before. A car takes over us and we just like man this driver is nuts to drive with such reckless behavior. Little did we knew that we would find said car. Completely overturned in the back of the road and a very fine lady waving at us. She had no scratch but reeked of alcohol. She was very flirty with my father and I always wondered what would happen if I wasn't there with him that night. Oh and just after dropping her, we saw a cow wandering alone on the road. Casual. Some years ago, I had a delivery to Laredo, TX. For those who don't know, commercial traffic across the border shuts down on the weekend. Since I had gotten there on a Sunday and the delivery wasn't until Monday in the morning, I had parked at the pilot, you know. The one across from highway that had a strip club next to the T. Lol. Now, we all hear the stories about thieves cutting through the back fence and stealing cargo out of the trucks. On this night, I was just about to get to sleep and suddenly it feels like there is a forklift demo derby in the trailer. Us truckers knows what it feels like when it's being unloaded. This goes on for a few minutes before I work up the nerve to go see what's happening. So, grabbing the tire buddy, I rush out to confront whoever and there is absolutely nobody back there. Doors closed with the bolt seal still in place. Even the seal number was the same. Next morning, I was so paranoid, I even scaled out to make sure the weights was the same. Nothing huge but I once was stopped by a train in Calumet City. I'll probably 2 or 3 am and it's a kind of the ghetto area. 
So I was a little uneasy being there at that time. The company I was delivering to was at a dead end just after the tracks. Of course there wasn't anyone around. Just me. I sat parked for like 5 minutes waiting on the train and all of a sudden I heard loud knocking on my door. Like rapidly to get my attention. I have a day cab so I looked all around the truck through the windows and mirrors. Nobody. The road was wide enough that I would have totally seen someone run away after doing it. I'm sure it was something not on this plane and I accept that. I'm sure people had been killed in that area. At some point in the past. Planes trains and creepy feels. I was delivering to a location in Ferguson, Missouri during the previous riot. The owner of the facility said it was safe to stay at, but after the first rock hit my truck, I moved 20 miles down the interstate to a truck stop instead. Dude, I get spooked just by passing a mirror and catching a glimpse of my own reflection. Hello fellow ugly person. My dad is a retired trucker and he's told me this story many times. He'd parked up in a very rural area for the night, surrounded by nothing but fields around and the occasional passing truck. He put his hair down and had a little nap, woke up sometime later needing to pee. He switched his headlights on and prepared to hop out and do his business when he saw a lady standing just a little way in front. He watched her, wondering where she'd come from when another truck drove past. He looked again and she'd gone. He got so spooked he drove to a more populated area and spent the night parked there instead. I slept in my rig on Walton's Mountain in VA one night. It wasn't the pitch black darkness that bothered me, it was the sounds coming from it. It wasn't animal noises, I have no idea what it was, but it creeps me out to this day. Not a trucker but, I've slept in 100s of rest areas, parking lots, state and national forests. The spookiest times are things you can't put your finger on, often in the desert. I was outside of Roswell. The colors of the land and night sky just felt strange. Everything has this purple hue. Gave me chills. A. Probably just the government testing some new drug on you. Happens all the time. Not a trucker, but well acquainted with sleeping at truck stops. Two years ago at a big stop right outside of Memphis, I was listening to my CB radio at 2 in the morning. I heard a very descriptive lot lizard. I have always been told that they don't say anything explicit until they get to your truck, but this one was very detailed about what she was going to do to this guy. Never while parked. South Memphis is a bad area, so it's a little worrying. The only thing that scared me was when I was driving through northern Nevada on Interstate 80. It was around 2am. I had just passed Battle Mountain. This was in the middle of goddamn nowhere and I'm the only vehicle. Haven't seen another for a good half hour. I see something coming up on the shoulder that is slightly reflective. I think it's a truck's reflective tape and he has the lights off so I move over to straddle the center line as I'm the only vehicle on the road. It was not a truck, it was an old engine man, wearing nothing but a reflective construction vest. He wasn't walking, he wasn't hitchhiking, he was standing there staring into the darkness. There was no broken down car in either direction. I don't know what he was doing or how he got that far out into the middle of nowhere, but that creeped me out so much that I remember the exact spot he was standing in. One night while in a four man sniper team we had to cross a highway in a small town. There was one truck parked in a small gravel parking lot completely alone with his lights on illuminating the forest in front of us. We could have gone completely around and taken a long time but instead we decided it would be hilarious if we knocked on his door and asked him to turn his lights off. So four soldiers dress in ghillie suits completely scared and confused a truck driver that night who though he was the only person for kilometers. Also, sorry about that. Have had some odd HWY encounters in my time. Not far from the Dalles in Oregon state is some HWY that's built out in the Columbia River, water both sides for short distances. I was with friends headed to Portland and all of a sudden a huge, tall figure appears in the headlights. Trench coat and a red face or balaclava in the center of the lane. Swerved last second as he was stumbling towards the driver's side. Car behind was following us. Saw their headlights swerve but they stayed behind is. There was no evidence of damage to the guardrails from an accident. No lights, car or motorbike on the road. Stopped a few miles ahead talked to driver of car behind me. Agreed that it freaked us all out pretty good. Another memorable incident few years later. Very late Christmas Eve on a remote HWY in Canada. No traffic for 100s of KMS. 
come over the top of a hill doing about 70 mph slash 120 km, a figure in the middle of the road, narrow two lane hwy, appears, I figure I can just swerve around but she shuffles sideways to maintain her position in front of the truck, I realize that I'm not going to avoid her so I hammer the brakes, still intent on getting around her, I manage to stop about 10 feet in front of her, Looked like the wife from the shinning in a purple full length quilted coat with plastic Safeway bags in both hands. She ran and threw herself on the hood all the while screaming. I threw it in reverse and she ran for the passenger side. This was the opportunity to get by her. Hit the fuel and cranked left and watched her in the rear view mirror. I took off fast as I could. Few minutes later, while looking for a CD between the seats, I found a cell phone that had been missing from work for weeks. There was just enough battery and signal to call the police. Grew up next to an exit off I-70 in rural Ohio. We have about 40 acres and the only things that border both truck stops are our house and a very large cemetery. Creepiest thing as a kid was when a pack of very large dogs appeared out of nowhere every night. We could hear them and had no idea where they were coming from and never saw them during the day. Eventually one night they got into our livestock pens and were trying to kill our pigs. I was stuck sleeping in a recliner with a broken leg and couldn't get up but I called out to my parents and my dad ran down with his rifle and my little brother. Heard shots. He ended up shooting one of the dogs that was trying to kill the pigs. Next day animal control had come to come out and they ended up finding the dog's owner. Some dude had been living in a trailer at one of the truck stops by us and had no money to leave. Had been stuck there for a couple months and was just letting all 10 of his dogs roam at night. Weird, I think one more was put down. I still feel bad for those pups. Most recently they've changed the independent shady stop to a loves. Large commercial stop, and a lot more interesting people have begun to show up. Most recently someone robbed the gas station and took off on foot. My aunt, who lives in the house next to ours, found the dude casually sleeping in a tree the next day in the woods behind our house. She then found a different set of people sleeping close to that area not long after the first incident. I'm a female so I get creeped out a ton. I drive at night because I think it's more peaceful and my husband drives during the day. I avoid rest stops like the plague because they always seem the creepiest. I also listen to forensic files on the radio while driving and it fuels my paranoia. One night when I had first started driving I stopped at a rest stop instead of a well lit truck stop just to use the bathroom and stretch my legs. I heard on the news a week later that a middle-aged woman had been kidnapped from a rest stop in Arizona and they hadn't found her yet. I had just been in Arizona a few days prior. I may not have been at the same one but it still makes me feel vulnerable. I carry mace everywhere I go now. Carry a knife on you, and have your tire thumper nearby always. <laughs> Happened this week. Woke up to two guys in the trailer stealing crap. You have been visited by the IT lizard, upvote or experience bad internet for a month, like and subscribe you magnificent person.